When it comes to planning a church, all of us have, or if you want to plan a church, will make very common mistakes. And so in this episode, to encourage you that you are not alone, we're going to share with you four common mistakes that all church planters make before launch. Welcome back to Practical Church Planting, where in 15 minutes or less, we'll give you practical tips, advice, and encouragement to help you plant and grow healthy churches. My name is Brian Androsian. Joining me today is Dylan Dodson. Fighting a cold today, Dylan. How are you feeling? Again, we're doing a batch of episodes, and I'm <laughs> yeah. so far, you, if you might have heard me sniffling <laughs> lately. A week That's ago. Why. That's right. And today we're going to uh, talk about four common mistakes that church planners make before launch. Yeah, so we all make mistakes, and these yeah, maybe, sure again, do. to encourage you to yep. know that you're not alone. These are ones that I think I've seen happen a lot, and I certainly struggle with them as well. So here we go. Number one, holding too tightly to future plans. It was funny recently, if you're a football fan, there was a meme. I guess when this episode comes out, it'll been a couple weeks ago. But there was this picture of Baker Mayfield, who was the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> yeah. And it was after a loss. They dropped to like two and six, mm-hmm. and they're like so clearly not doing well. And they had a picture of him back to back. One was like the day he signed with the with the Browns and his like hair and mustache, and he was all smiley. Yeah. And then the second one was the post-game interview after going like two and six, and he has like <laughs> this big brown jacket on. His hair looks crazy, and he's all sad. <laughs> And I thought it was like, you know, to me, it was like a perfect image of like six months to a year before planting a church and then a year after launching. Yeah. You have all these ideas of other things that's going to (laughs) happen and then reality hits and you realize, man, this is not at all what I thought was going to happen. Yep. And so all that to say, it is good to have plans and dreams and desires, but you got to be careful and not being too dogmatic about them. I think Larry Osborne talks about how, you know, what we, we can, the temptation is to like attach a Bible, Bible verse to everything that we say. Like, mm. here's our value, here's a Bible verse, and here's yeah. why we do this, here's a Bible verse. And then you change it, and then people assume that we did it because it was in Scripture, and now you're changing it, so mm. what are we doing here? Yeah, yeah. And so it's okay to like, like fortunately for us, we have, we have five values at New City, so our membership process. We've got like a thing that we ask everyone to do for each one. At some point in the future, those are, those might change because now that we're two and a half years in, we do some of those and other ones we don't really do. Yeah. Um, and I think if we change them, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, granted, we probably should talk about them maybe more than we do, but we also have never been like, this is this is it because it's like the best thing ever. And so all that to say, whether it's your plans or your values or things that you want to be comp- accomplish, you should have confidence and say, here's what we feel like God's having us to do, whatever. Like, here's what we want to do, but don't like make it seem like this is the best thing ever, or here's all the reasons, you know, there's a, there's a tension there. Like you want to say, here's why we're doing it. But if you're too dogmatic about it, or if you like stake your claim of we're, we're a church that does this, unlike other churches, and then you grow and realize, oh, there's a reason why other churches don't do it this way. Yeah. You just got to be careful if you hold too tightly and then things change and then you're not able to change. Yeah. I mean, we, we've said this before, but th- things are going to be different good or bad, maybe, than you expect them to be before you launch. I mean, I, I think it's so easy to expect that you're going to be huge, like, we, especially if you're, <laughs> a, I've said this before, especially if you're like a conference going person, it's so easy to see all these like huge yeah. stories and stuff like that and these huge things. And it's just not the reality for 99% of us. And, yeah. it, and so it's easy to get these, these plans and put these things in place and not, and many of which are probably good, but to then hold on to them so tightly because you really just are kind of holding on to this, I don't know, dream or something yeah. and not willing to let them go. So I think there's a, there's a little bit of a tension between, obviously you don't, you don't want to hold on to tell you things, but obviously you don't, you don't want to be wishy-washy. Like you were saying, you don't want to yep. come across as if like, uh, I don't know what's best. And so we're going to try this and maybe it will change and who knows like you need the lead, but at the same time, be realistic enough to, to know that in a few months, things are, may look way different than you thought they were going to yep. look. And that's okay, but just adjust. Yeah. And so I'm mean, going to have confidence, but maybe you could always think in the back of my mind, if in two years, what I'm saying now is going to change, is how am I is how I'm presenting this now going to make that change possible? Right. So have plans, but just know that some of your plans will you will stick with them, and some of them that you you will change. Yep. Uh, number two, not being clear enough about finances. This was something that I, going back, would have done differently. And what I mean by clear is like I think. I, uh, sometimes we think we're clear when we're not. Like if people are asking a lot of questions, just for example, it could be easy to get frustrated with them, and like, but it could be a sign that like people are just confused. Yeah. And so when it comes to finances, I think especially in the launch phase, it's helpful to be like, here's our fundraising goals. Here's where we're at. Here's where we need. I just I still remember having one couple on our launch team. We talked about our need for forever, mm-hmm. and then one day finally saying, oh, I guess we should start giving to the church plant. This oh, yeah. is before we launched and everything. And I'm like, what, what do you mean you Guess should start? Please. Like, why haven't you? Yeah. Um, and I think, so again, just saying, not in a way of like doom and gloom, because obviously, especially, I mean, 
you're probably not going to hit your goals, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> especially the further you are from launch. Yeah. But being open and honest with people about where you're at makes them more likely to give. Because um, if people see the need, they're more likely to give to it and maybe encourage others to. And so I would just say, be open and honest about where you are because people don't know. I mean, just saying, hey, we need more money is is not good enough. So I would have been probably more trans... I don't know how you would say it, but like just been more upfront with where we were at. Yeah, and... I think what you said was good. You don't want to be doom and gloom about things, but you got to be realistic and people need to know where you're at. You know I mean? And, and I've experienced before where, where it seems like the, the, the leader, the pastor is talking like everything is wonderful and yeah. great. And then like, yeah, we don't launch <laughs> like, you know, and then like <laughs> something happens and, and, and everyone else is like, well, I, I didn't even know there was anything going on. Right. And, you know, we could have helped. And so be, yeah. be, you know, this is part of leadership in general, like be, uh, honest about things where, or, you know, be open with things that you need to be open about, but you can do it in a way that isn't all negative. We just, yeah. we actually, I mean, we're obviously launched a while ago, but we, we just started slash finished. It was a very quick process, but, um, <laughs> a building fund, fund raise commitment. And a couple thing. episodes we'll share more yeah. about it, but yeah. yeah. But, but like long story short, it was, it was a, the kind of thing where we, if we weren't honest about it, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Like it, it was not a, we'll try and make this thing happen. It's yeah. like, it's now or this is never going to work. Yeah. And so like, it's just one of those examples to where like, if we were wishy-washy about it, this would not have happened. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Well, I mean, a couple of episodes we'll yeah. share the yeah. money we raised and everything. And, but part of it was like, we were just honest and yeah. here's what we need. So and people want honesty. Like, yeah. That's a good thing. So be honest about it. Be clear. Yep. Number three, hesitancy in making decisions. Now, mm -hmm. because we're here for you, our next episode, <laughs> we're going to give you four thoughts on how to make a decision when you don't know what to do. Oh, so man. look at this. specifically, we're just, we're just pairing up these episodes. That's right. The we're going to go in two. detail. Yeah. But suffice to say now I've been there. I think everyone's been there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a tendency of not sure what to do, but you still have to make a decision. And I, I mean, it still happens today, although not quite as much, but maybe two years from now, I'll look back at today and be like, yeah, that's still happened a lot. Yeah. But uh, I just remember like the first year so often being like, I don't know what to do, asking people's feedback. But then the day you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And then the day like, there's not, there's not always like a, a right one. Mm -hmm. It's just of here's where we're going and letting people know where you're going and, you know, be prayer and, and we'll hope it works out. But all that to say, like, you, you have to make decisions on things. And so you just have confidence. That's just all. The, make them. <laughs> the best thing I could yeah. say is like, there's, and we'll talk about it in the next episode. Um, but it's, a, it's just a very common thing. Like, I don't know what to do here. And so you take forever or you don't make a decision mm -hmm. or like you make a decision, but you couch it in so many caveats. So we're not quite sure. Like, it's okay to say like, Hey, we're not gonna, quite sure how it, this is going to work, but here's what we want to do versus we're not quite sure, but here's what we're going to do. But then it might not work. But if it does work, but then this could happen. Like, don't give a million reasons why it might not work. Yeah. Just be like, Hey, we're not quite sure. But then make a decision. Um, that's what I, I, my personal experience, and I've seen it at others, is being really hesitant. At some point, you just gotta make decision. And and I, I have said this before. But this is one of the challenges if um, leading or planting a church is your first kind of like real life leadership experience <laughs> thing. Because yeah. th this just is with any sort of leadership. You got to be able to make decisions. Sometimes hard decisions, sometimes not. But you have to be able to make them, explain them, and be okay when you're wrong. Like you're gonna be wrong about decisions and that's fine. But if you spend all year not making a decision and just kind of yeah. flip flopping back and forth, nothing ever gets done, no one's gonna follow you. And that's, I don't know that's why when you it. said this, but I when you said make them and explain them, I thought make them, explain them and activate them. Oh, activate. I don't know why I thought activate it. Take action. <laughs> that's so that's so cheesy, but it sounded really cool in my head. Oh well, you know. Make them explain them and do them and do them <laughs> coin that um this okay but it's okay not to have answers because you're not especially in the beginning yeah but you've got to have confidence to make decisions and being super hesitant people can tell so and making wrong decisions is okay like yep. it's it's just it's gonna happen a million times so get get used to it but like it's okay it's okay to admit you're wrong and it's okay to have hindsight and you know hindsight's 2020 you don't know what's gonna happen until it happens so like make the decision you're gonna be wrong it's okay yep 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 that's it so that's hesitate it. making decisions and then number four Focusing on what you want to do over what you can do. So again, this mm. kind of goes back to the comparison thing of That's like good one. all the churches that are doing the things that you want to do and you wish you could do this and you wish you could do that and you all discourage and then you don't figure, focus on what you actually can do. Yep. Again, there's strength in all different sizes and phases of a church. There's something, there's something 
really positive about being smaller and easier to connect and more organic and of course being maybe bigger and having more finances whatever mm -hmm. like but it's just again for me for so long i was just so caught up in like i wish we could do this or that and people especially if they come to a church plant they're not looking for those things yeah. and so you're like wishing you had something that your people don't care about mm -hmm. um and so lean into the strengths that you have and kind of leverage okay we're a smaller church we have i don't know however many people what does it look like to be i mean there's you want to plan for the future of like if we to grow but you can't like live in the future you got to like live where you are yeah and so how do you strengthen and lean into where you actually are and improve what you actually can do as opposed to what you just want to do one day and th this is part of i think in my opinion the danger of and i mean there's a lot of good in them too so i'm not trying i like them i'm not trying to say they're all bad but like of of like books and conferences that are all marketed towards um church planners like there's a lot of yeah. good but there's a lot of like you should be doing this. And a lot of people that go to conferences to, to get ideas of different uh, programs, ministry, whatever. Yeah. And it's just a lot of it, it's, you're, it, you're not set up for it. And we weren't, and that's fine. And that's not a bad thing, but just to go with like all these future plans of like, it'd be so sweet if we did this. I can't wait till we can do this. And you totally, totally lose sight of like all your people that are sitting there saying like, I'm here now. Yeah, and Like, let's do something now. And I guess go back to a couple of episodes when we talked about things that you don't have to have when you launch Yeah, is like some of these things, they just take time to develop yeah. and to have and to create. And so- I mean, even if you implemented something from the beginning, it doesn't doesn't mean it will even work. Yeah. And so it's okay that you don't have everything. Just work towards it um, where you are now, not just what you think it could be one day. Yep. And yeah, that's what I've that's what I've learned. Live with what live 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 in the moment. Live where you're at. You know, whatever. Something whatever. like that. Don't always. I mean, look to the future. Looking to the future is good, but don't forget about where you are right now. Yeah. Live in the moment and take action. Or whatever I said. <laughs> this is just. This, this is, is just full of nuggets. So anyway, <laughs> those are four common mistakes church planners make before launch. Yep. We made them. You probably have to hope that encourages you that you're not alone. And if you feel alone, join the Practical Church Planning Facebook group. <laughs> that was the segue of a lifetime. <laughs> That's right. So that we can plant better churches together. Yes. And subscribe to the podcast if you haven't. So you get episodes every week. And until next time, we'll see you on Practical Church Planting. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Practical Church Planting. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or Practical Planting, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, make sure you like or subscribe or do whatever it's telling you to do or should do on that platform. And hey, if you are so tired of looking at our ugly faces, but you're not tired of listening to our beautiful voices, mm. then you can find our podcast if you just search Practical Church Planting on iTunes or Google Play. Make sure not to just find it, not just to listen, but to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe, Brian. Tell them to subscribe. Subscribe. See you next time.